All he did when he came in was to retrench people as if he was coming up, uh, uh, into the entity with some good news. But uh, he left ESCOM where he found it. There is no improvement there. Let's hope uh, Mr. Khadebe will be replaced by a capable person, not a political, uh, uh, what you call, a deployee. And we feel sorry about his health condition. Well, one of the reasons that we do know that was given by the by Pakamani Khadebe for his resignation from Eskom was the unimaginable demands of the job. Sikhanati Manchancha is the deputy editor of the Financial Mail magazine. He joins us on the line now. He's been following the situation at Eskom for some years. Sikhanati, good evening to you. This resignation came as a Friday shock, and yet perhaps we shouldn't have been that surprised. We all know how difficult this job is. No, not at all, uh, Stephen. Uh, we, we should not have been surprised. Uh, I mean, Khadere uh, came into ESCOM uh, in an emergency capacity to, to help fix what was wrong. So uh, it should not at all be a surprise that then he's now out. What do you think made him go over the edge? Is there some one particular factor that we can see that decided that actually for him he just simply cannot continue? As I mean, he hit the nail on the uh, on the head when he spoke earlier. Uh, the, the, the first thing is the large interference of the shareholder. Yes, of course, you 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 must admit that it's totally uh, well uh, intentioned, but it has not allowed the the, the 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 management to carry on the operations, the task for which they were hired, uh, because they 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 keep uh, finding themselves squeezed between the board and the shareholder. Uh, that's that, that, that's the one thing. The, the matter about the health, uh, I would not think was that urgent about Mr. Hatebe's uh, health. I don't think was that urgent. But the the, the whole ESCOM thing is a, is a uh, po politically hot potato. Uh, he came in uh, thinking he can do the job he was called to do. When he said, "We okay, guys, we don't have any money to increase salaries," the minister who was just hired him a month before that said. No, you do. You will increase the, the, the salaries. And there, there has been talk about a restructuring. That restructuring, we have said, uh, Stephen, is not going to be sufficient on its own. And we do know that the government will not have anybody uh, even uh, interfering, uh, trying to reduce costs, uh, because the government is beholden to the trade unions. And you have just had the trade unionists who, incorrectly, in my opinion, say Hatebe has had no impact. He's come in and certainly stopped a lot of the corruption that was going on there. That is not to say there's no corruption at ESCOM at this point, but he has come in and brought stability, particularly to the uh, to the to the management side where where people just were, were stealing left, right, and centre. He he has stabilised the ship there. What he now does need, and and the next chief executive is the political coverage to carry on and fix what is wrong with ESCOM in terms of the people. And of course, you do need uh, the, the the financial capacity to maintain the power stations to actually finish uh, the the Mitupi and Kusila and make sure the utility turns out to what it should be. All right. I mean, we talk about the unions, we talk about the other politics of this. Could there be another situation where there are just uh, too many cooks trying to come up with a recipe to fix Eskom? We've got the minister. We don't know yet, yet who the minister will be, although I think there's some smart money on who it might be. Um, there's also an advisory panel. There's still a board which has now been in the job for about uh, 15 months or so. Are there just too many people involved? And I say that knowing at the same time that Eskom is a massive, massive entity with massive, massive problems. Stephen, about, about three months ago, I said exactly the same thing and said every second week the president or the minister are announcing uh, some sort of committee. All of these come and have more authority and power than the management and, uh, and the chief executive. And not all of them know exactly or are, are, are carry on. They talk about it. They don't exactly carry on and, and, and mandate the management to do what it needs to do. Any company must be run only by the operations, uh, chief executive and his, and his management team, and the, the, the shareholder, uh, the, the board appointed by the shareholder. That's it. In the case of ESCOM, you've got an intermediary, a ministerial task team for this, and then there's another team for that. And uh, not long ago, there were uh, apparently some foreigners that were coming in to fix power stations. Management is there. 
every second week you come a press briefing and you do not allow the people to, to, to run the organization and give them targets and hold them to those on a quarterly or, 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 or yearly basis. That has not happened at ESCOM. So you have had indeed far too many cooks and uh, none of them have, have done anything to, to, to hold the slide in terms of the operations. And the, the, the only thing uh, then, of course, as the chief executive decided was best for him personally is, is to get out. The, the, the problem is not solved by his departure. Uh, you still need the government to stand aside and allow the management to operate the company, and they need to start by appointing the, the, the competent and appropriate people to those positions. I mean, in the middle of all of this, you've got the appointment of a chief reorganization officer for Eskim. You've got unions, as I say, you've got business, you've got various other people. In the middle of it, you've got consumers who just want the lights to stay on. And I would imagine Pakamani Khadebe's comment that seemed to be in an official statement that this had been bad for his health. It's not the best advert for the job. How difficult is it going to be to find someone else to replace him? Look, uh, finding someone else to replace him is not going to be the most difficult of things if the government will allow the person to do the actual job for which they will be hiring them. Uh, it's no secret that Paraman has never claimed to, to, to be an engineer or to know the engineering side of ESCOM. You need that kind of person, the engineer, but he's a financial engineer. You need that he's skilled because uh, ESCOM is a huge banking problem. So whoever comes in there must be given space and the resources to do their job. The government needs to just set the target and say, we're going there and we'll meet you in three months to evaluate your performance. That has not happened. We are now going into a, the most stressful period for that job, winter, which will bring load shedding. There definitely will be load shedding. And, and, and Paramani was going to be, have to be, the, to be the face of that. So whoever they come, they, they get. There's a lot of people that used to work for, uh, for ESCOM that are totally skilled, that built the organization. They can be brought in. Will the government stand aside and allow them to restructure the company and allow them to run the organization and, 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 and fine-tune its engineering and make sure it, is, it, it delivers to the people of South Africa what is mandated to do? Sikonati Manchancha, thank you for your time tonight. Deputy Editor of the Financial Mail magazine.